We're back for another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Mari. And on today's episode of The Spicy Life, we have some amazing women in store. We're going to do today's episode on the five things that women need to respect a man. And to join me and get in on this hot conversation is Angela Christine. Angela Christine is from Chicago, Illinois, represented for the Midwest, and she is an Emmy Award winning hairstylist and founder of Conscious Curls. We also have Roxy from Riverside, California, and Roxy is a radio personality and founder of Amigas for My Soul. We also got Ingrid Clay from Lafayette, Louisiana, and Ingrid is a celebrity fitness coach and founder of ISC Wellness App. And Abigail Rosa from Whittier, California, DJ and radio personality, founder of Mass by La Rose. Now, all of these are crazy, sexy, amazing, passionate entrepreneurs, right? So <laughs> we all are very powerful women. And I wanted to get us all together because I wanted to show and let the fellas hear five, you know, of us talking about the things that we appreciate in a man because this is just to inform them, to show them more love on how they can earn our respect, right? Women mm -hmm. want to feel cherished. Men want to feel respected. Well, I want to help the brothers out and let them know what they could be doing more of to uh, conquer us because uh, we're a conquest. If anything, I want us to start off with me going through some of the things that are the five things that men need to step up with in order for us to respect them. And the first one, I want to get all of you guys' take on it. The first one is fellas need their own self-respect. Do we agree? Mm. Disagree? Agree. I want, agree. You, guys, agree. I want you guys to share agree. what yeah. are signs that you've experienced when a man didn't respect himself and how did he show up as respecting himself? Um, so I can start. I remember I was dating this guy um, years ago and all he wanted to do was drink and eat mm. and eat and drink and smoke. And it was just like a cycle that I could not be a part of. And he was like, he was already a bigger guy. But years later, after I was, wasn't was dating him, he lost all this weight. He was in the gym all the time. He actually opened the gym. And I was like, mm. see, I knew the guy I was dating was not loving himself, was not mm. respecting himself in his temple. Because this guy over here, like, Oh, he's all about the self love, you know. And you can see, you can see a difference in men when they hit that, you know, that breaking point, and then they grow again. But it has to; they have to love themselves. Mm. Anyone else? Have you guys witnessed a man who didn't respect themselves, and it kind of made you kind of like, yeah, no, you're not about to earn my respect. Mm -mm. I get the. Um, a lot of times, I always feel like sometimes guys will try to compete with me work wise, you know, and. <laughs> in a sense. And I, and I always kind of feel like there must be a reason there's an insecurity there. And mm. that's like, to me stems from not really loving yourself because we don't ever, I don't want my man to ever compete with me. We are a partnership, wow. like we're a team. So there's no room for that. So anytime I see something like that, that's like kind of like a red flag to me. Like you're not happy with what you're doing. You're not happy with yourself. You need to figure that out. And then maybe holler at me later. I don't know, but <laughs> I just, I always feel like that's a, a red flag that I'll see, but um, I don't know. I feel like I've, you know, I've dated this one guy, well, probably more than one, but he Bust just comes to my out. Bust him out. <laughs> 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 Loving yourself because he was just so confident. Like when he walked in a room, it wasn't, and it wasn't like in a like arrogant way, mm -hmm. but it was like a sure, I'm sure of myself, I'm sure who I am way where you were just drawn to him. And it's just so refreshing to see. I love seeing men step into their power like that. You know, it's just, um, it, I mean, it brings me joy, whether I'm dating them or not. It well, you just touched on the second thing, Inga, right there, power. In order mm. to respect a man, power is a panty dropper. Um, <laughs> it's beautiful. It's attractive. It is extremely attractive, but a lot of men may not know what power looks like to us, right? Oftentimes, they think that power is just being able to um, command people at their will, but that's not always how power shows up in a relationship or how power shows up when you're dating. What are signs or things that a man can do to demonstrate power that make us ladies coo? That make us ladies like, hmm, okay. I can get That's with attractive. it. Yeah. yeah. You know, I used to have a boyfriend that, um, 
and and back to what what you were talking about, I feel like a lot of times when a man doesn't respect himself, I've I've experienced that in dating younger men mm. versus dating older men. Like when I would date younger men, it was like they were constantly trying to catch up to me, comparing themselves to me, and I'm like, hey, like stay in your own lane. And I kind of started feeling like mama bear. And I was mm. like, that is not cute, okay? Uh, but and I'm not saying all older men have it together, but uh, back to the power question. I feel that it, oh my God, I, I really feel, and I, I know men think we're complicated, but I feel like I'm pretty simple to be really honest. What? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm an asset, not a liability. Okay. Uh, but so my thing is this, when I feel like when a man, when a man had a power over me in a, in a, in, and I mean that in the most beautiful way, right. Is when he allowed me to be me and he knew how to like put me in my place in the mm. most sexiest, respectful way. It was never a uh, like, Ugh. he was never talking down to me. It was always like, he would just have to say my name once. Yeah. And it, and it was like, it, it was like, damn, like it was that much power because I respected him. I admired him. He moved amazing in his own life. And so, you know, it to me, when a man could just kind of look at you like, and it's that look at you of like, Roxy, you know, I got it back up, take a back seat without having to say that. And even if you do say that, don't say it in a way where you're trying to check me yeah. because we're both adults, right? Like when you could say everything you need to say in a really loving way, because there's mutual yeah. respect between each other. To me, I'm like, Bobby, I will take the back seat any day. Give you an example I mean? of how to say it in a loving way. Because sometimes fellas are not even aware way. that they're not coming off loving. They just think they're being direct and they don't understand that there's a certain way that they need to say it. Give me an example of how someone could get you to do something that you don't want to do and get you, you know, to, to submit. I'm going to just use the word submit. Get you to submit. Because that's what it is. When you're saying yes, you are submitting. For example, this is the man that I've experienced the most. I should have married that man, but he had a mama's boy. He was a mama's boy. <laughs> But uh, he submitted more to his mama than he did to me. It was crazy. Um, maybe, maybe that's why he was a great man, because he submitted to his mom. I don't know. That's a whole nother live you could do right there. Right. That's another but, episode. Um, that's I, a whole know, to me, he, he would just be like, he, he just made me feel like he had my back. And he would legit, Madi, and to everybody that's watching this and to all the girls that are on here, he would literally just have to say my name and just look at me in a certain way. And I kind of knew, like, with that energy, that look, he just kind of looked at me like, I got this. And it was it was a look that I'll never forget. And it was a look that I haven't been able to find that quality in another mm. man. But he was, mm. it was so natural. He was such a natural born leader with me. And yeah, it was pretty sexy, bro. That was a panty dropper. Every time, every time it was a panty dropper. <laughs> powerful like what when a man shows power for me is giving me the decision to choose so when you kind of when you know what you want but yet you're still gonna go aside yourself to just get my input and my and even if we don't agree and we agree to disagree what I find to be powerful for me is just my wanting to know my opinion yeah wanting to be a team in a situation because I've been in past relationships where even just the the name I Roxy I wish I could ever I could have experienced that whole name and oh that's it I'm falling back baby yes but for me I've experienced the opposite where it's like you say my name and I'm rolling my eyes and I'm like oh like no it's not happening but that's because the lack of respect that was there off top so the respect factor definitely has to be there but what I find powerful is when a man allows me to choose and then I'll more than likely I'm a Scorpio. So I'm gonna love you regardless. I'm going to choose <laughs> what you want, period, but just give me that choice to choose. And what I've experienced now in these grown relationships that I've, that I've been in is that they, they care. Like they, they do really want to hear what I have to say, but then they'll also be like, well, I think babe, what's best for you or this, that, and the third. And you know, I could take forward from there and, moving to move the right way, whatever way I choose. So, so Abby, you just want to feel included. Like you were in on the, yeah, day, just make, you know you're going to go I think way, way. <laughs> Yeah. But see, that's yeah. my past relationships. And those are past traumas that I'm dealing with is that 
when you're in relationships that are just so vital and everything you do is against each other, now any type of inclusion in a relationship, it does make me feel good. It makes yeah. me feel like, oh, you care. But mm-hmm. again, it's a learning I think that's a good point, though, because bringing giving somebody an opportunity to choose actually makes your other partner feel powerful. Right. Because when you're when you're commandeering or when you're doing all of the directing or, you know, when you're freaking dictating, it makes us feel powerless. And we want to still feel powerful in the relationship. We will submit to someone who is powerful, but it doesn't mean take away our power. Mm -hmm. What that looks like you're saying is include me in on the decision. Communicate. Because yes. men oftentimes say that we, you know, are guided by our emotions and they lead with logic. But oftentimes if they were, and I will say this, if they were logical, they would know to communicate with us mm. <laughs> and make us feel included, like you just said, and at least make us feel good, right? Like control, yes. guide my emotions into a place of feeling good with the decision that you're about to make on our behalf. And that's now wow. even more how they get us to trust them. Yes, Mari. This is why you're a relationship. (laughs) (laughs) Roxy, (laughs) the third one is the third one is trust. Okay. So the third one is trust. Part of us not allowing or not feeling like we can respect a man is he hasn't earned our trust. Do you ladies think that trust is given or trust is earned? How do you guys operate on a daily basis in your dating? Because um, I only brought on singles because I wanted to hear from the powerful single women who are enjoying their dating life fabulously right now. It's earned for yeah, sure. It's there's earned. Sure. there's it's levels to this. <laughs> <laughs> there is levels to there's this. Levels to it. Yes. I definitely think, you know, it takes a while. I don't know. For me, it takes a little bit of a time too, but it's like consistency. I'm pretty much like, if I say I'm going to call, I'm going to, I'm going to call. If I say I'm going to be there, I'm going to be there. So I kind of expect the same things. So when it's, I start to see like flakiness or things, I'm just Mm. like, hey, serious. Like I'll put him to the side. He'll go on ice for a hot second, you know, until there's like some consistency, you know, I just, I'm a big proponent of being consistent. If you keep your word and that trickles into other things. If you can't keep your word on just like calling somebody, what can you keep your word on? You know? That part. Speak it. Speak it, Ingrid. Oh my God. What Ingrid is speaking to, and I'm just giving you guys like, of course, the scientific component. Um, (laughs) The way that trust is earned is through credibility and reliability. So what Ingrid Mm -hmm. is saying is the words that you say, fellas, and the actions that you take make us say yes to you because we're looking for consistent credibility plus reliability. That lets us know that over time, we know that you are going to show up for us when we need you. And therefore the world is your oyster because we trust who is leading us. And that right there gives you the power. So you can almost get like half of the things in the respect elements met just by doing what you say that you're going to do. Here, but yeah. A lot of times this is why men ghost though, because they know that they're not keeping their word or they don't like the way that it makes us feel when they disappoint us. And they would rather disappear than be in trouble, right? Think of it like when you were little, you're just going to like, okay, well, let me like sneak or let me hide this because I don't want to get in trouble and I don't want to be reprimanded. How do you guys handle it though when the guy does make a mistake and, you know, he has to reschedule a date or he doesn't keep his word? How do you guys treat him? It depends It depends on how they go about doing it. Like if they just totally slake and don't say anything, then it's like, oh, next, I'm not dealing with you. You know, if, they apologize and they set another date or they try to make up for it you know or they just go about it the right way then you know it's something to take into consideration but you don't hold it over their head yeah you know i feel like people make mistakes life has a lot of things that it tends to throw at you so it's like you know you can't be like super judgmental over one little thing but like you said the consistency is what is the most important so are you consistently rescheduling on me okay i don't want to rock with you Mm. yeah and, you know, I, I love being becoming a mature woman because I think when you're younger, you see these things as like, no, well, no, you make excuses for him. Mm-hmm. But as you get yes. older, yes. You start, I realize red flags quickly now. Quick. Right. And I think I think like I love what Angela said, because, you know, just because a woman is strong, independent and powerful doesn't mean that we're not understanding. Like I'll totally right. understand a man if he says, hey, you know what? 
I know we like, you, like I'm going out on a date tomorrow, right? <laughs> my first hey. date with an Egyptian guy, Madi, you would be Whoa. so proud. Of him. Egyptians and man, he was like, he had told me we're gonna we're gonna go on a date. Um, but but the Dodgers went to the World Series, so like most men, he loves sports, right? He's like, oh my god, the Dodgers are playing on Tuesday at 6 p.m. So in my mind, I automatically thought like, oh, this dude's gonna reschedule on me, right? And I was like. Let me, and I'm kind of just, he's like, but we're still on for our date. And I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to pick the spot. I'll let you know. And I was like, good job, you know, because, and, and, and still, if he would have rescheduled, I wouldn't have been mad because I'm pretty understanding because my mm -hmm. life is busy as well. Um, but I think people have this notion of independent, strong, powerful women, like, oh, they're, they're divas. They don't understand their suit. And it's just like, no, take all that preconceived garbage, you know, out of your mind and like keep your word that's one of the four agreements be impeccable with your yep. word if you're gonna say something do it isn't yeah. that common sense i don't know to me it is i feel like <laughs> it, i feel like it is i just don't understand um my thing too is a respect factor like don't call me last minute and say you have to, to cancel uh, like i mean i'll listen to the reason but like the certain things will hit me the wrong way because it's like you don't respect my time I totally respect the man that works. If you're working, you have to reschedule. That's fine. Do you, boo? I, I love it. More power to you. But respect my time as all as well. Because, yeah. I mean, I could have booked a client. I could have, mm -hmm. like, scheduled another date. Like, I'm just saying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, <laughs> you should always have one on backup just in case anyways. I no, mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> like, it, it's, it's a respect factor, too, in that. Yeah. The, gentleman, the gentleman that I've been seeing, um, he travels so much for work and there's times where he's like, okay, I'm landing. I'll go and see you. But as soon as he lands, he'll let me know he lands, which is so sweet. But sometimes it'll take him hours to get here and I'm waiting and I postpone my day. And it's the respect factor of wait, but this is my time now. And I have right. to remember too, my time is just as valuable as your time. I might not be on every flight around the world, but I'm here and I could be working out or doing this or doing that. So it's just being respect, respectful of each other's time and understanding yeah. that there's so much value in time. The monetary is amazing. Yes. If you could adore me, great. But if you could adore me and respect my time, amazing. You know, I will, I will love you even more for that. But I remember calling my sister Maddie and being like, Oh my God, I'm waiting already. This is three hours. I've been waiting. I could have been working now. I could have been doing this. And you know, I'm like gluing on lashes to see this person. So there's <laughs> Not days the makeup. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. There's days where you don't want to be wasting a good lash. Okay. Right. <laughs> no, it's, it's definitely the consistency and just keeping your word, your word, like Roxy said, that's everything. If you don't keep your word and you just, Go, you know, do you and don't have no consideration for the other person. Yeah. Not All of us like talked about, you know, how we make, you know, exceptions for work and stuff like that. But when it comes to the fourth thing, the fourth thing is financial security. How important is it that a man be financially secure before you give him a chance? Are we dating anyone who's unemployed right now? Are we dating anyone who's in between? Well, I've been, I've, like, been no. with the, I've been with the broke broke and then I've been with men with means and I think it, it's um I guess it's it's how they make you feel honestly it's because they're a man that's not rich in money could be rich in other things like mm -hmm. having a great family or having a great a value system or moral system and you know a moral compass is everything because I can meet men with money and they're trash you Facts. know so yeah. it's it's it for me I've dated both ends of the spectrum but having some <laughs> having some money is very nice it's, it's, <laughs> was it's, the relationship a lot a nice more fun time. with the money than it was without <laughs> um it's a lot more secure with money as far as him allowing me to feel like a woman but it with a man that was rich in other ways, it was a lot more fun, to be very honest. That's what oh, I see? found in both ends of the spectrum. Look, and I feel like we've all been with someone broke. <laughs> I know yeah. I've rolled through the trenches a few times. <laughs> that is, I feel like there's a certain security and I'm like, I've, da I've dated both. I, I, I married someone who was comp like, was, you know, he wasn't like super rich, but he was like, you know, good. He had a good, he had a great job. He was smart, but I do. And I feel like there was more, um, security there almost than so 
I've dated someone super rich and there was not that much security there mm -hmm. in a way um, because of that. I don't, I don't know. And maybe I, you can find both. I mean, the goal is I'll find both. But, <laughs> but I do think we, sh I don't, I wouldn't judge or not date someone because he wasn't is what I'm getting at. You know, I do find other values important in life and it doesn't always revolve around money. Well, I feel like there's a misperception though, that we care so much about money, but I feel like as successful women, you do want someone who matches your level of ambition. You do want someone who's yeah. equally yoked with you and yeah. how hard you work is a reflection of the time and energy and effort that you've put into building your empires. So it is important that you at least have someone I feel like on the same page who's about building because I've dated yeah. some men before that were not ambitious and I didn't even believe in their potential. I don't even know how they got it, but <laughs> I was young. I was young. <laughs> okay. They don't count. They don't count. They don't count. They don't count. Oh, <laughs> I think too much into potential. Oh, he got potential, girl. He got potential. And that was when I was younger. I'm like, no, he didn't, girl. <laughs> he did not have potential. Potential is not enough for me. And, and I get what you're saying. Like the whole, like, I think it has to be 50, 50, honestly, because if we're going to have kids, I don't want to be with somebody where I'm still worried about money and I have to carry this child and breastfeed and have, you know, be down. So like, I, I need to see both. I need to see financial stability, but also the care and the consideration and the love, you know, and the trust that you're going to be there for me. Cause I do, I have had experiences with rich men where since they had access to everything, they weren't as grounded, I would say, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you know, somebody who is struggling, you know, is not going to give you security in a different way. So it's like, I think you yeah. equally need both and it doesn't have to, they don't have to be the richest man in the world, but if they're financially savvy, if they know how to, you know, find deals, you know, we can still go out for dine LA. Like we don't have to, you know, you don't have to spend $300 on dinner. Like we can go out and make it, you know, make sense and find really nice restaurants or find really nice experiences for a good price. We can, you know, vacation where we find deals. Like all of that is fine as long as we're going and doing it, I think is the point. And I've dated both successful men and men that are not that successful, but damn, you know, sometimes you feel like the unsuccessful ones are the ones that can put it down better. Because being a successful, independent, powerful woman that really doesn't need anything, right? Like I own my house, I own my cars, I own my businesses. I really don't need anything from you. I desire you to definitely meet me on my level or be above me because it gets ex emotionally exhausting yeah. to have to pull a dude up. You're just like, listen, like I can't do this, you know? So uh, what I've learned in observing men and kind of like doing my own research with men is a man feels a lot more secure about himself when he's got extra paper, when he's got like, you know what, baby? Like, I, I just right, feel like a man part. just feels more manlier. Um, and Steve Harvey talks about it. The, a man needs to be able to do the three P's, provide, profess, and protect. If yeah. a man can't provide, he doesn't feel, uh, he doesn't feel, um, what's that word I'm trying to use? He doesn't feel like, like hit, accomplished and happy mm -hmm. with himself. And that's one of the reasons my last relationship ended. He was younger than me, six years younger than me. Literally, we had an amazing relationship. I helped him start his marketing company. The whole time, I'm thinking we have great communication. In his mind, it's brewing. He wakes up one morning after five years, and he's just like, listen, I can't be with you no more. And I'm like, why? He's like, I'm not where I need to be as a man. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm always trying to catch up with you, Raquel. Like, like, I need to step out and go do me. And now he's thriving. But a man, I just feel like, needs to feel like a man before he can go out and try to have this relationship. I mean, not everybody has the Gucci Mane and with his girl story. Where, like, he stood <laughs> by his side while they were in prison. Like, you know, that, that's far and few in between stories, yeah. you know, where yeah. a girl will ride with you like that. But I feel like, I just feel like two whole people come together to have something amazing. And I, I desire a man that is cool, that is spiritual, that is financially stable, that loves God, that loves his family. And then, and then people think, is that asking for too much money? I feel I mean, like, like we just I made your profile right here. Yeah. Fellas, call right. me now. <laughs> <laughs> so at the 
spicy like you know me for a day with Rafi. <laughs> she just gave you know, what's on her list. I mean, that's not a lot to ask for because a lot of times we. Do you think that's a lot to ask for, Madi? It is not. You're asking, like, the way that I break it down, and this is just like a spicy tip right here, is not just, like, make a list of all the things that you want. You need to make a pizza. A pizza is still delicious and yummy as a pizza, but it has to have the crust and it has to have the sauce. The toppings is extra. So the crust is the foundation. What are the five things you need to just call him a good person? Not your man, just a good person. Then the sauce is... The way that he treats you. What are the five things that you need when it comes to how he makes you feel about yourself and the treatment? And then the next part, the toppings, that's what does he look like? What are the things that you need to be physically or sexually attracted to him? And the toppings are negotiable because it's still a good damn freaking pizza, regardless of what those toppings are. But us ladies have been operating like in our masculine energy by going from the toppings to the sauce to the crust. We've been going at what does he look like? And then we'll get to know him and see how he treats us and then find out the foundation, the crust's not there. What we need to be doing is going crust, sauce, toppings. Toppings is last. I know sexual attraction, yes, it's important, but we can get, we could put his ass on the treadmill. What we can't do is make him a good man. We can't make him a good person. And we got Ingrid over here. She will work your man out, okay? (laughs) I've been with. He will get snatched. (laughs) My my last relationship, he was super ambitious. He always had, he was up before the sun, working nonstop on his computer. Like, but what what he lacked was that opportunity. So I always felt Mm -hmm. like, okay, don't worry, I'll be next to you until that opportunity comes. But like Roxy says, it's not until they're in that space where they feel most powerful. Mm -hmm. And that's usually with bands under, you know, in their bank account and in their pocket when they feel like they could provide is when they feel like they're whole. And when they're able to be that man for you, because yes, even though um, my, my ex-boyfriend and I, we were, it was already like a bad relationship from the start, but it, that part was always an argument because he always felt like I was trying to one up him whenever I would go to work or have an event or something. Mm. And I'm, I'd be like, why are you so like, I didn't understand it, but now I understand it. And it's yeah. Roxy hit it right on the nose. It's not until they have their own, their own, basically, whether it be career, their own money their and they're not seeing every day, your successes and celebrating every day, you, 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 it would genuinely bother my ex. And I didn't understand it. I always would get in these power trips with him. Like, why are you so jealous? Why are you so jealous? But then I realized, oh my God, that was so wrong of me because I didn't understand what a man really needed to feel like, like you could put it down, you could clean for him, you could cook for him, but it's not until they're in their own space is when they're going to feel whole and able to love you. And it sounds like you guys are talking a lot to like his level of security. Like when a man doesn't feel secure with himself, once again, when he doesn't have self-respect for himself, it's hard for him to give it to us. Mm -hmm. and what that shows up is is a lot of what you're saying is this competitive energy this jealousy energy and that makes us not respect a man like wait are you jealous of me like that's not sexy but that makes us then question like dang i'm and maybe i am i doing too much am i maybe i should be making him better feel better maybe should i I be should be affirming him more because as women we step into our feminine energy and we're like oh how can we make it better for you poppy versus like acknowledging oh you're insecure in this moment i may need to be with someone else or give you your time to you know fly little butterfly fly (laughs) but a lot of times we don't want to walk away and we stay longer than we should when he's not where he needs to be how long do you guys feel like we should be staying in this like supportive you know um position before we walk away three months (laughs) <laughs> yes. Roxy, thank you. Because I've stayed five years thinking, yes, I'll be there. Well, I'll I? And <laughs> yeah. I, stayed, I, stayed, I stayed for a year, two years too long. But I think it depends on the relationship. And you just have to communicate what your needs are. I feel like you have to communicate what your needs are on a regular. Yep. And then if they just yeah. never meet them, then at some point you got to do inventory and say, well, I communicated this time. I communicate. It's almost like with jobs, right? Before they decide to fire you, they have to tell you three times basically what you're doing wrong. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it's kind of the same with relationships. Like as long as you're communicating your needs and they're receiving it, if they don't ever change, then you got to just keep it moving. So whatever that timeline looks like, it's, that's between you and him. 
I'm like, give me an action plan though. Like we can't just, we can't just be talking about how we feel. And I feel like something's coming. I feel like something's coming. I need to know the action plan. Like I'm going to be doing this on this day. I'm going to be applying to, like you said, jobs. As it's just like a job. I need to know, like, what are we doing for our improvement? Cause I can't just buy into something without evidence. I can believe in you all I want, but what makes me believe and respect what you're saying is actually the action part. I hear you. That's the, the credibility, but the reliability is what you're doing. So if you're going to lead us in the relationship, give me a game plan. Tell me where we're moving, where we're going, what you're applying to, what vision you have, even if it's like you wanting to build your business or you wanting to leave your previous position and starting your own business where, where's our business plan? Like, let's start on this. I can support something, but I can't support air. I need, yeah. I need to see results. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I think I'm, a lot of women feel reaffirmed, like with acts, like you, when it comes to the five love languages, mm -hmm. acts of service, you know, like at least I could speak for myself. It's like, you could, you could tell me and preach to me and drop every star from the boat. If I don't see your actions backing up your words, I'm just like, uh, my tolerance level for reals, Mari, and, and I'm proud of myself. It's mm -hmm. gotten lower because I was that girl that would last a year before you knew it. It was three years and then it was five years. And I was like, what? Like, no, like it's, it's, there comes a point and that comes with maturity. Obviously yeah. there comes a point where you're just like, wait, no, no. And so when I say three months, I mean that. Like, I really mean that now. And Mari, you know my last situation, girl. You were, I was like, Mari, am I doing the right thing? <laughs> but, but, but you know you know when you know you're doing the right thing? Yeah. When your intuition is 100% guiding you, like, you know it's, you know it's not what you want it to be. Yeah. Um, and and you're, you've tried and you've put all the options out there and you've given him the opportunity to show you and you're just like, nah like mm -mm. like it's it's not it's not budging it's not clicking I, I don't understand i don't know what and so don't waste your time ladies is all i'm saying <laughs> but uh, we, lose, <laughs> we lose trust in <laughs> our intuition we're with the wrong partner when we're not with our purpose mate and we're just with an experience right or not with mr right but mr right now we lose trust in our decision making ability so we are allowing you know the blind to lead the blind and we're allowing someone who's not maybe a leader but he makes us you know feel all kinds of butterflies you know butterflies and raindrops and wetness in our boom boom we're letting him lead us but he's not really equipped. He's not a qualified leader. So we start trust distrusting ourselves because we can't trust him. How do you guys get the trust back for yourself? What happens? What's the light bulb where you're like, oh my God, I'm in an effed up situation. It's like, I shouldn't be here any longer. Just when you listen to yourself, when you listen, when you finally do listen to your intuition again and you take that leap of faith to step out there and do whatever it is you've been putting off. You know, for me, when I did leave my last relationship, I honestly felt clear. I felt better. And it's not to say that love wasn't there, but it just wasn't the right decision for me at that time. So finally stepping into making a, a better decision for myself, it felt so good. And I, I felt back to like, okay, like I trust, I trust me. I trust what I'm supposed to do. You know what I mean? And you just have to get back to that place. Like I think self-care um, gets you there, you know, spending that time working out, going on hikes, getting massages, you know, meditating, all those things will time get with you your back girls. to that place. Yes. Spending time with your girls, you know, talking it through, talking to your therapist, whatever it is to get you back to the place where you can trust your intuition again and then make a decision based on what your intuition is telling you. Yeah. I, um, I think too, it depends on the severity too, because I was in an abusive relationship and it took, I decided to take two years for myself because you know, you, when you're involved in something like that, where it's, it, you do, you don't trust yourself mm -hmm. because you're like, who child, how did that happen? Yeah. <laughs> and so you're, you know, I, you needed, I needed time to kind of like rebuild myself. And I always say too, we, you know, a lot of times we talk about self-care, we forget a major aspect of self-care, which is examining, you know, what you could have done differently, what you missed, you mm. know, um, because when I look at it now, I'm like, oh, yeah, I miss that. I miss that. I miss mm -hmm. that. You know, it's it's good. It's, and it's not to look back on it and blame yourself, but to look back on it, you know, take note of it, learn from it. And you won't, you know, and, and don't do it again. But I also believe, too, I had to, like, fully heal myself before I decided to jump out there and start dating again and trusting again. 
because that's the other thing. If I go out and start dating and I don't trust myself or anybody, I'm just like, oh, I'm just like, <laughs> sorry, my uh, email. <laughs> She's I'm a boss. Like She's a boss. She's getting notifications. Just, them out there, <laughs> you know? um, so yeah, you know, I do, you know, you have to, it goes back to the trusting yourself, the respecting yourself, you know, you can't, you can't find someone and attract the same energy if you're putting out something different. What about yeah. a man who comes at you ladies and says he is working on himself and he's not dating that's right sexy. now. Okay. No that's what. No part of it. <laughs> Abby doesn't want any part of it. No parts. Wait, that he's working on himself. He's and working what? on himself, and he's not. In, he does. He doesn't have time to date, or he doesn't want to be in a relationship. Oh, and, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Like he already told you what he wanted. He it, don't want a relationship. Yeah, he doesn't want a relationship. No, but men no have men need space though to work on themselves as well. I don't think they take enough time for this like self love, self care, where they yeah. take a break from dating or a break from women, a detox, and they work on themselves. Like a man who's going to therapy, I find that sexy. A man who is going through some coaching, a program, whatever that may be, um, some self-love books. I find that sexy. Like what tools are you using for your self-growth, fellas? What tools are you using so that you can become a better leader for me when we do get together? And I also don't think if you can, if you're in a position as a man where you don't feel financially secure and it makes you insecure, it's okay to take a break from dating as well versus letting us feel that energy of you not being able to feel like you can provide and then putting that out on us. Yeah. yeah, we could be friends. We, could be friends. <laughs> we could be friends. We could be friends. We could be vague friends. Acquaintances. Yeah, Abby's like, we're going to be friends only. Yeah, Abby's like, friends <laughs> only all day long. <laughs> only you meet on the DM. That's I'm just it. I'm going to be a friend. I don't, I'm good. I'm, I'm good on you. Yeah. I, I, you know what? I find it really attractive. I don't even want to like, get involved with that energy. At this when now. a man tells me he's gone to therapy, when a man tells me I know what my love language is, that's one of my questions when I go out yeah. on a date with a man. Um, the other day I asked a man, so what's your love language? This is how much men don't read and don't know, yeah. right? This is not just a woman thing, fellas. You've got to know your love language. I go, so what's your love language? And he goes, soft kisses on my neck. And I was like, <laughs> I, I was like, no, I said, there's actually a book. By the author is Gary Chapman, and it's called The Five Le Languages of Love. And he's like, oh, I got to read that. I was dead. I was like, what is this guy telling me? Like, But no, when a man has worked on himself, and when a man tells me I have a relationship with God, when a man says, like, let's pray together, when a man tells me, I've never had a man tell me he has a journal. I think that'd be a little, like, I don't know. Well, um, why can't men journal? It. I feel like that's I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I want to meet a man that tells me he journals. That would be <laughs> but I haven't met one yet. I haven't Bella, met one start yet. journaling. You'll have a chance at Roxy. <laughs> <laughs> you go, yeah. Bella's going to be in your DM like, I got this journal. <laughs> <laughs> Did you write in it, though? <laughs> right. <laughs> right? Where did you write it? I just, just, just have it. It's just blank. <laughs> I just have it. Just here, right? No, but what I will say, uh, Mari, is when, when it comes to listening to your intuition, Listen to your own intuition, because what I've noticed is a lot of women, and I get this because I get my followers that slip into my DMs, mm -hmm. or because of the podcast, they'll, they'll ask my sister and I, everybody wants to go out there and ask all their homegirls opinions. Yeah. And you know what, let me tell you something, when you know who you are, and what you desire, and what you pray for, and what that list looks like, or your requirements, or whatever you may call it, you don't need nobody's opinion on this. All no. you got to do is literally sit with yourself. Because you literally know the answers. You don't need validation from nobody when your intuition is speaking to you so strongly. And I think a lot of times women make that mistake where they want to go ask everybody. And it's just like, baby, you got the answer by yourself. Like, I've done that, Roxy. I have been guilty of that where I needed all my homegirls' opinions. I needed their homegirls' opinions mm -hmm. just too much. And instead of just checking in, it was like, did I check in with God before I checked in with every homegirl's homegirl, homegirl opinion? Like, no, I didn't. So you're right. Intuition is everything. And when you really understand how powerful your own intuition is, when you really get tuned in and tapped into that, it guides you into your own destiny. It's, it's yeah. amazing without having to deal with everybody's opinion and everybody's thought on how it should be your relationship should be or how you should handle your emotions or feelings. You're right. Roxy yeah. intuition is everything. It is. I call it my inner God voice. Mm. Yeah. That part. But sometimes we will ask 
Lord, send me a sign. Send me a sign. Should I stay with this man? Should I be with him? Lord, send me a good man. Is, oh, hey, you know what, Spicy? Lord. And then we don't I'm, listen to the signs. The Lord doesn't send 20 signs. And we're still like, yeah, no. Send me 21. I will tell you yeah. this. I take, I take advice from my friends that have, from my girls that have had, like you, yourself, you're married. My sister, she's married. She's gone through it. She's, you know, going through her situation, but I like experience. But if you, my single homegirl that's still going out seven nights a week and still looking for the next, I can't take your advice because we're in that same boat and I'm trying to get off this motherfucking boat. boat. So I need some (laughs) sage advice from my sage friends. Abby, you're dropping a gem right now. I will ask my clients, who else are you listening to? Who else is in your ear? When you come to me and you're paying for this service, I need you to take full advantage of the fact that you have an expert who's going to guide you through, know all the ins and outs of your relationships, talk to your friends and your family, get to know everybody. I'm immersing myself in your life. And then you can go listen to friends who have not the relationship that you want. They're single in these streets and you don't even respect their decision-making ability. I need to know who else is in your ear. And I will advise them for this time, protect your energy. Just for this time, protect your energy while you're dating. Protect your energy even when you're in the relationship. Uh, And protect your relationship sometimes. Because we're hearing all of these voices. And when it turns to 20 different voices, we forget which one is ours, which one is God's. And, you know, we're not even sometimes even listening to our partner and what he's saying. Because we're choosing what the friend is saying over what he's saying. And the friend don't know how to keep a man to save her life. That's yeah. true because I I must I have to admit when I was married I was married young and I was the only one of my girlfriends married. They do not listen to single girlfriends in your marriage. Okay, <laughs> yeah. she, that girl I love her to death, but she does not know what she's talking about. Okay, <laughs> leave them out of your marriage because the only person you should really be communicating with is him. And if you want to talk to your mom because she's been married, that's fine. But even that too, I would say no. Be careful with that. Because yeah. they remember it and they will always side with you. So oh, they just leave them, leave people out of your marriage. Don't talk to anybody about your marriage. They don't know about your marriage. The worst mm-hmm. thing you can do is go to a single girlfriend. Girl, you need to see <laughs> him. She's crazy. She don't know what she's talking about. That's why she's single. <laughs> And be careful what married couples you go to. If they're not in a happy marriage, if you don't Mm. find that they have a marriage that you, that is relationship goals for you, maybe we're a little bit careful with what we share with them as well, or what advice we take from them. Because if that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to like speak life into your relationship and into your spirit, if they are unhappy with theirs, if anything, they may even give you some bad information. So you do, you just want to be careful with who you take information from, especially when it comes to, you know, your healing, when it comes to your love life, when it comes to your partnership, if anything, you guys are absolutely right. Talk with yourself first, talk with God and talk with your partner. (laughs) Yeah. The fifth thing in, in that order, <laughs> in that, in that order, uh, the fifth thing that a woman needs in order to respect a man. And I wanted to hear from you guys on this one is the chivalry part, the honoring and cherishing her and providing chivalry. Are you guys down for the, like, let's go Dutch on a meal. Are you guys down for the, like, let's go halves on everything in the house. Like talk to me a little bit about how do you one recognize when a man is chivalrous and two, what your definitions of chivalry are. Well, I like to be spoiled. Hey, now. I love all the five love languages. Like, I, want them all. I, like, <laughs> I like to be spoiled. Um, but, but listen, the, the, the truth is, is like, this is a really sensitive topic for a lot of people. Um, but my, this is my theory for my own life, right? Is I, 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 I hope and pray to attract the man into my life that could do more for me than I can do for myself, right? Um, I... I love to be spoiled, but I also love to spoil my man. Like, it's not just a me, 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 me. Like, and I have to be careful. Like, I've realized and I've learned that about myself that I am, I'm a lover. Like, I am a lover. And when I love you, I love you so hard. And Mm -hmm. I give you a lot. And so I do expect that in return, you know? So when I do go out with my man, I do expect you to have our back, you know? And then, but I also expect you to say, if I say, baby, you know what? Like, I got you tonight. 
I expect my man to be like, okay, baby, like, mm-hmm. if I want to treat you, let me treat you. But 90% of the time, you got to treat me. Hey. Like, and I don't think there's <laughs> wrong with that, right? Because I'm going to love you just as hard as you love me. I'm going to scratch your back at night. You see these acrylic nails? Like, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to do the little things you love. But I do expect to be spoiled. Um, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Do, do you even call that spoiling or do I call that my expectations? I expect... I expect that. And I believe that I will manifest that because I do believe there are chivalrous men in this world. Yeah. I've experienced it yeah. a lot. I've never gone on a date where a man is like, let's go half and half. Thank God I don't attract that energy, you know, because I, I attract men that think abundantly, thank God. But yeah. um, abundance mindsets. Yeah. I mean, in my last relationship, <laughs> we, we split our, we split the mortgage, you know, and that was about the only thing we split. And that was pretty good for him being younger. Huh? I was like, okay, go ahead with your bad self. But yeah, <laughs> and you also started his business, like you funded his business, like and th- and then he left me. <laughs> right, see, they, see, and that's why sometimes, like, <laughs> us as women get tainted because we're like we do pour into them yeah. and we don't get it reciprocated. But you guys, that is a part of love. It's a part of falling in love. But you get to a certain age where you're like, oh, I'm not about to fall anymore in love. I'm about to rise in love. And that's when you start being more intentional with who you are attracting, what you are attracting, and why you want what you're attracting. Is because then when you find your purpose mate, that is how you rise in love. It is all about how can I pour into you? How can you pour into me? It's my cup is overflowing because I'm with somebody who I respect because he gave the credibility, the reliability, he provided intimacy, and he did all of this with the right intentions over a long period of time. He earned my respect and my trust. And so, mm-hmm. and I didn't just, one person hurt me, and then I jumped off of the, the, you know, the dating process. I kept going, okay, this door, close it. This door, close it. This door, close it. Open another one. Open another one. Like, you got to keep going, and we get frustrated as women when it comes to dating because we experience disappointment. But I love, Roxy, that you were like, okay, according to him, he didn't necessarily overflow my cup, but on to the next. Like, you recovered from it. And she'll yeah. get that back 10 times yeah. from her next Women, relationship. Well, I, I believe that. <laughs> we bounce <laughs> back so fast. I I Angela, like you too. Out. Angela's bounce back game is well, we bounce back. Our bounce back game is strong. Okay? I, I think because I gave so much in my last relationship and this relationship where I was actually pursued, pursued, like I have never been pursued where it was like a year of just Instagram and then it was slowly, can I please take you out? Can I please see you? I mean, can I be nice? Did I? Is this someone I referred to you? No. Okay. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I've sent you a couple of referrals. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, can you send some referrals by way? <laughs> <laughs> ready for some referrals. Ready for some referrals. <laughs> and I, gotcha. I think because I, he he basically poured so much into me that he didn't make me feel like I needed to bring anything to the table. But as a woman, because I I do bring the woman aspect in our dynamic whether that be you know uh cooking dinner cooking a nice dinner or being in my full feminine divine power and just even even you know making good love and giving a surprise blowjob those things they (laughs) they do matter but in my last relationship I gave so much I gave so much I I was okay, but I'm so, and it still wasn't good enough. Like, babe, okay. You know, we'll we'll go half on the electric. We'll go half on this. We'll go half on that. And they, and they still were just not understanding of it. They were making more than me, but it was still not enough for them. And then Mm -hmm. to attract that abundance mindset now, and the gentlemen that I have been attracting have just been like, don't worry about it. It's fine. I got you. Are you good? Are you taking care of what do you need? That's sweet for me. And that makes me want to bring everything to the table, even though it's not accepted. And they're like, no, 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 you don't have to do anything. Just, you know, if you want to do something, you can. But I do understand what Roxy's saying, that abundance mindset is everything. When you start thinking like that for yourself, who you attract is everything. Roxy, I'm so excited for your date tomorrow. Yeah. With the- <laughs> <laughs> you too. I'm excited, girl. He's I Egyptian. hope you get that. <laughs> <laughs> I've never gone on a day with an Egyptian. I'm talking to an Egyptian, a black man, and a white man right now. I'm single. It's your life. You gotta say I need your, get it, I need girl. girl. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you right. I got you, boo. I got you. <laughs> well, Maddie, you know what I have learned from you, Maddie? 
is, I mean, and I learned this when we had you on the podcast. And I, when you said this, I was like, gosh, she's so right. People want to want to manifest love, mm -hmm. but they don't go out. Yeah. So as much as I want to stay in my, in my queendom and be like, this is where I'm safe. And this yep. is where I have, like, I'm like, if I don't put myself out there, how am I going to attract the king? Right. right. So yeah. Mari, I'm taking your advice because down in, deep down inside, I don't want to go out on these dates. Cause I'm like, uh, cause that's like sharing your energy. And I don't mm -hmm. really get along with everybody. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm about energy and not everybody's energy is on point, you know, but I'm like, Madi says, I gotta go. <laughs> I know she true. got me back on dating apps. I have dated, oh more, my God. I have dated more in in quarantine than I have dated in the last two years. I've been exciting. doing like three to four I dates a day. day. <laughs> I had three in one day. Oops. In girl, <laughs> so yes. Exciting. Get yours. <laughs> I'm she enjoying wants, it. She wants a partner. Like she's like, okay, let's get this show on the road. She took two, Ingrid took two years off, like just to wow. focus on self after the divorce. And so you have to be also in the energy of women who love love. Part of what messes us up is that we have our single friends and I have a ton of single friends. I love my single friends. But one thing that I'm always speaking into them is that they have to fall in love with love. You can't want yes. the relationship and not love the process to get there. And the process okay. to get there is falling back in love with love, with the process of dating, of the research. That's really what our dating is. It's not, oh, who can I take advantage of and who can pay? That's not what we're doing. It is. We are doing research. We're gathering information about what it is that we love, that we desire, what we like, what we're attracting. Do, do investigation on yourself too. Why do I keep attracting this particular type of person? Uh, how am I responding to certain questions on these dates? Am I sounding more like this is a job interview instead of a fun game show? Like, see how you're showing up to these dates too. Right, and you got to right. be in the energy and the company of your girls who love love because you have those hater yeah. us girls who are like oh girl get off the apps don't do that like no you gotta have people who are in your ear that are telling you keep going have fun with this change your perspective yeah. this is good for you this is not torture and you don't want to have to do anything to like get the man like you gotta do a little something we gotta go on dates we gotta meet men <laughs> it's my second time being on apps too and this time it's not so serious like i'm just like really just kind of like enjoying it Good. See, I love what you I'm sure hearing. Me. Like happy daters, and like Abby, you had to put yourself out there too, because clearly you let somebody slide through your DM, girl. Listen, Madi, I never <laughs> forget. By the way, everybody should know Madi is a straight shooter. She says it <laughs> how it is. In the midst of all my chaos in my last relationship, I remember talking to her and she laughed at me. She goes, girl, when you're ready for love, call me. And I was like, <laughs> I, I was like what do you mean? She's like, no, when you're actually ready for it, like to attract it, to bring it into your life, call me. And I didn't understand what she was saying until what you're saying now, Madi, it matters surrounding yourself with people who love love and who are going to be team love and who want you to yeah. flourish yeah. in love yeah. matters. Yeah. Because when you're there having wine with your girls and everybody is just so bitter about love, it really affects you. Mm -hmm. and, it, and you, you replay <laughs> those conversations in the back of your head. And then you remember, damn men, men ain't shit when they really are but it, it, does, it does matter to be around the right type of friends the right type of women the right type of even couples though because i've been around some couples where i'm thinking i'm gonna leave loving love even more and i'm just like ooh, i definitely don't want that like, <laughs> it matters it matters <laughs> It matters. it matters. Yes. And I am team love all day, which is why I want like the fellas to understand from, you know, this episode that like you can get you a queen, but this is how you have to show up as a king. And yes. oftentimes when they move in the energy without the same intentions as us, you know, things get a little out of whack and we get a little scorned or they get a little scorned. Sometimes they, you know, pour into us and we don't reciprocate sometimes too. us as women are guilty of having a nice, great, you know, great guy in front of us, but he's just not the guy for us. Mm -hmm. And then men get a chip on their shoulder too. It's not just us women that, you know, have had these experiences. Men too sometimes are suffering in the relationship realm. But if we can all come to a place of positive energy of like, you know, I'm going to make this process as fun for you as it is for me. And we give that energy back to each other. We don't have to be, you know, walking around afraid of one another. Because that's what has happened in 2020. Men are afraid of women and women are afraid of men. 
What? Afraid. We're afraid to be vulnerable. We're <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Look, Erin said, "Don't be afraid. I'll be nice to you." <laughs> you guys got to answer this last one though. When it comes to the panties dropping, what does a man do to earn your respect and get them panties to drop? What will make you submit sexually to a man? How does he have to show up in his masculine energy that makes you sit in your feminine of allowing? I think it's a combination of like trust, a genuine connection, respect that we talked about, um, and then timing too. I mean, you know, sometimes it's <laughs> the right time. Yeah, because I, I can't even lie. I've definitely had first date sex. And I mean, has it lasted? No, those connections never do. But when you do have like a genuine love, or not love, but a genuine respect and timing is everything as well. And sometimes they could just say the right thing as soon as they say that sentence or whatever, you know, Feel. going down yeah whatever, Ooh, whatever i really want to know nice what those words are right now <laughs> that for me is like okay you got it it's ready let's go <laughs> i think too another part is the the sensuality i think a lot of men are not sensual and mm -hmm. so they kind of approach sex from a like much more mechanical or just like Arr. like you know and sometimes women we want to just feel cherished physically and if you know how to like use your hands and talk to us and like in a way that's not just sexy and sexual, but sensual. I think that helps too. Showing up sensual. Like it's a that. connection too for me, like a yeah. connection intellectually too mm -hmm. for me. Like I'm turned off by like, Ooh, like <laughs> I told Madi, this one, but I'm turned off by on a first date. Ooh, your titties look nice. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I Thank mean, that. thanks, but you're not gonna hit this. I, you know, all right. It needs him. to be something consistent. Like, you know, you you're showing up. You're showing up. You're showing up. You're showing up. You're showing out. You yes. know, you want to know more about me. You're passionate about life, about other stuff. I can see it. I can see the way you talk about your job. I can see the way you talk about family. That shit is sexy. Yeah. Like, you know, it's not even about sex. But the way you show up in your life is sexy to me. And that makes me want to drop my panties. You know, yes. I don't hardly wear any, but when I do. For me, for me, you guys, it's like, it's definitely a connection. I love when a man, I love, I, I just love watching and observing the way a man shows up for his own life you know because they yeah. say the way the way you do one thing is the way you do everything yeah so i and then, and then like angela said i think she said it's it's, it's about the timing too because abby like john legend chrissy Teigen, they had sex the first night they met and they're married with two kids later right <laughs> um i i've done the one the first time sex on like that first date and i was with this guy for five years so mm -hmm. sometimes it's just good where you're just like <laughs> oh my god the connection is just like I don't know if you would even call that connection or like a, a sexual attraction, if infatuation. But I think now that I'm older and that I'm more mature, it, it's just a lot of different things. But if I'll tell you one of the main things. If a man can't sustain a, 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 a conversation where like, my, this is how I rate my conversations with mm -hmm. men. If I just want to get on my phone because you're whack, I'm like, oh God. But if I'm like, Oh my God. And what else? And I didn't know this. And yeah. if I feel like the man is stimulating my brain and teaching me and inspiring me and like, man, you just up my game all yeah. the time. And it's yeah. consistent. I'm going to want to drop my panties because, but, but not because it's like all oh, you're blowing smoke up my ass because right. I'm smart and I read a lot. Like yeah. I'm going to know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like if you start talking to me about certain things and I'm like, yeah, no, like I know more about that subject than you. But if I, you're legit just like on it and I'm like, yo, this man, oh my, you know, listen. <laughs> the ladies, <laughs> fellas want emotional intimacy and intellectual intimacy. How yeah. do you guys get that? Okay, well, fellas, I'm going to tell you, share, that's sharing a story about yourself, something that happened to you, a fond memory. You're going to inquire. That's actually asking the other person who's in front of you. Usually it's a pretty little girl like us. You're an inquirer. And then you're going to respond to what she answered from your question as if you cared. 
So oftentimes I tell the fellas, even if you don't pretend to care, because us as women want to feel connected to you and you have to learn what that looks like. Practice showing up as you care. And we really want the authentic caring. But sometimes we are talking about stuff that you always may not be that interested in. But guess what? We're doing it for you, too, because we want to learn more about you. And what the ladies we're touching on right now is ask us questions when you're going out with us. Ask us questions about ourselves, because oftentimes we're such huge communicators and us as ladies practice all the time talking because we're so open. We share, share, share with one another that when a man is put in front of us, he's not having these, you know, in-depth conversations with his boys. And now he has to turn on. And so, fellas, you can get some of this practice by your dating experiences by sharing more, inquiring more and responding more. The spicy 